Hey guys, welcome back. Merry Christmas. Today I've got a cool video for you. I'm gonna be looking at five pieces of kit that change the way I work. So let's get into it. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be looking at five pieces of equipment that I own that really change the way I work. Now, they vary in terms of price. Some are pretty expensive, some are not so expensive, but I'm gonna talk about each piece of kit and why it's changed the way I work. So the first piece of kit I'm gonna be talking about is this, it's a tripod. You've probably seen this tripod. I feel like everybody owns this tripod and there's a good reason for that. It's the Satchelor Flotec with an Active 8 head. Now you've probably seen this tripod before, because yeah, everybody has this tripod, but there's a good reason for that. This tripod is amazing. Now it's not the cheapest tripod, it's actually pretty expensive. I think the legs and the head, the Active 8 head, came to almost three grand, I think two and a half grand. But the way I look at it is if you own an expensive camera, like the Komodo, you know, that camera cost me like six grand or eight grand all in with all the extras. Do you really want to sit that camera on top of a 500 pound tripod? Not to say there aren't great tripods out there, but I have had in the past accidents happen. I had my Ursa go down because the tripod wasn't strong enough or it just had a loose leg and that Ursa went down, hit the lens, broke the lens. And you know, you don't want that to happen. That's your worst nightmare. This tripod, you know, is great. The one I had before this was a Manfrotto and it was really difficult to release the legs, open it up. It didn't have a spreader as well, so the legs would just kind of flap apart and it was a nightmare to try and, you know, use that as a solo operator. It can be really difficult and you can kind of look like an idiot. And the last thing you want is to look like you don't know what you're doing. And it's not that you don't know what you're doing, it's that the tripod is so fiddly. The thing I love about this tripod, unhook the legs, it goes down, it comes up. And all I've got to do, fasten them in and it's locked and as a single operator you know when I am on those shoots alone that is just really easy for me to do it takes no time at all yeah I love it the spreader comes off this spreader and you can go super wide so you basically get a low boy as well as your tripod included there's another great thing about this tripod and that is the active 8 head now you don't need an active 8 maybe your camera's light and you could go for an active 6 I went for the Active 8 because it future proofs me if I get a newer camera that's heavier. And what I love about these tripods is if you buy into the whole system, you can basically bring up this paddle and that's how you level it. So there's no screwing underneath that you would usually get with a tripod. Really quick and simple, up, level, down, locked. Also another great thing is if you have a slider or you have some other system that you want to take this head off and put it on. Paddle comes all the way up, head comes off and it can slot straight onto that slider, whatever you've got. Put it back on, locked. Really easy to use tripod, expensive, but honestly, it is amazing. I, I honestly feel like I won't need to buy a new tripod for the next 10 years, you know, and, and beyond if this one holds up. They're incredibly hard to get hold of. They're sold out all over the place, but they do crop up every now and then. You basically can't find any used which I think is a good sign. It means that the people that are buying these tripods are sticking with them. And yeah, since I've bought this, total game changer. I just, such a pleasure to use. Feel completely confident leaving my camera on this. I know it's not gonna get knocked over. Yeah, I love this tripod. And I've never said that about any other tripod before in my life. Okay, so the next bit of kit, and you've probably seen this one a little bit less, but maybe you have seen this one. Let me get it. It's a Cine Saddle. Now, maybe you've seen a Cine Saddle before, maybe you haven't, but it, basically all this is, is a bean bag with a strap on. <laughs> um, it's just a bean bag. It's got a strap attached to it and you can just sling this over your shoulder. You can rest the camera on it. Essentially, it does a very similar job to an Easy Rig. Um, and I did own an Easy Rig in the past. And the reason that I eventually switched to one of these is the Easy Rig is great, but it sometimes can be kind, kind of awkward to have a, that thing dangling above you. You know, you can bump into things. It's much bigger to kind of take with you and it really just does that, that one job, which is, it does very well. And you know, I wouldn't say that this necessarily has replaced the entire need of an easy rig, but for my general use, it's, it's basically good enough. It's a really handy thing to have, you know, you can, you can use it on the floor, you can rest your camera on it to get it, you know, get those shots a little bit more stable. 
And yeah, I take this on shoot because it's super lightweight and I just fling it in my car and it's, you know, I use it often as well. And the Cine saddles, are, they cost about 300 pounds to buy. Now I'm quite lucky, I never paid for this. My friend gave it to me. I don't think he knew how expensive it, it was. This is nowhere near worth 300 pounds, no way. I wouldn't suggest you go out and buy a Cine saddle. And I've seen on Instagram as well, there's there's a cheaper version of a Cine saddle kicking around, but that's still 150 and I, I still think that's overpriced. I think you could build a Cine saddle for 50 quid. And I think it's worth 50 quid. I think you could get a backpack, you could get some beads or foam balls, whatever, and just fill up a backpack. And I think that's basically gonna do the exact same job as a Cine saddle and it's gonna cost you a lot less. But this thing is great and I love it. And I use it all the time. Really easy thing to make and really, really useful. I use this all the time. So the next thing on my list, number three, is this lens. Now, I'm sure you all know about this lens, the 18 to 35 Sigma. This thing is great. I love this lens. I've owned, I think the GL Optics PL version of this. And the reason that I love it is it's a super fast lens. It goes down to 1.8. So it lets in a lot of light for a zoom lens. It's relatively small for a zoom lens. I think it's good to have a tighter, option with you as well but 18 to 35 really covers a nice range use this a lot for interviews and I basically just keep it in my camera bag because this will always come in useful you know 18 is quite a wide lens if I look at my Samyang 14 mil I think that lens stops the stop is about 38 so that doesn't let in a lot of light this is 18 so you are getting more light into the camera and sometimes you're gonna you're gonna be in a scenario where you would prefer more light to the frame size so 18 to 35 Sigma, I'm sure you've heard of it. It's a great lens, but if you haven't, check this lens out because this lens is freaking amazing. And you, I bought this used, I think for about 350 pounds. So it's not the most expensive lens as well. It's like for a zoom lens. If you haven't checked out the Sigma 18 to 35, check it out. My favorite lens. Well, it's my favorite zoom lens. <laughs> By the way, if you've noticed my thumb, I cut it the other day. <laughs> I'm right-handed as well. So all the things that you do, with your thumb like that you need it for maybe i'm dumb but i just didn't realize how much your thumb is used right before christmas cut me thumb that's what that is that's my attempt at a bandage so the next piece of kit it's quite a new piece of kit that came out a few months ago and that's the rode wireless pros i love these mics they've changed how i work because before this i just had the single road now that didn't have inbuilt storage to record onto and i am the kind of person that I've had situations in the past, you've lost footage or, you know, not very often, but it has happened. And I love a situation where I can back myself up. The road goes record to themselves and they send a feed to the mic. And that's really nice because I know if for any reason, you know, the mic has cut out and, you know, maybe the wireless has played up. I know that I've got that audio recorded on the mic itself. And having that in 32-bit float is just an extra layer of backup that I know that I've recorded the highest sound, the lowest sound. I know I'm good. I've had these mics on people under clothes and stuff like that, and I'm still getting really good sound. Now, nine times out of 10, I'm probably preferring the boom sound because I'm looking, you know, that's the sound I'm gonna use because it sounds better usually. But it's really great to know that if the boom for any reason, I've got a wide shot or I haven't been able to get that in, that these are there doing the job. And I've had great audio out of them. I love them. They are a hundred pounds more than the um, Wireless Go 2s, but these are a really good deal for two reasons. They come with lapel mics, two lapel mics, which would cost you 50 pounds each. So there's that hundred pounds in value already that you're getting back. And they also come with a charge case, which for the Wireless Go 2s, you have to pay extra for that. You're getting more than hundred pound in value and they're only hundred pounds extra. So maybe you don't have that extra budget, but if you do, I highly recommend that you just pick these up because I'm loving them, they're great. And the battery lasts ages, pop them back in the case. If it's getting low, then it'll charge right back up. So you know you're gonna get a day's use easy. Now the final piece of kit I've got, again, it's not a new piece of kit. I've had this for a long time. It's the Ronin, the RS3 Pro. I've had gimbals in the past. I've had the old Ronins that were really big and you held like that. They were more of a faff and they rarely gave me the results I wanted. Maybe that was me putting a camera that's too heavy on there. But with this one, you can put the Komodo on that. It's gonna balance perfectly. It doesn't take me any time to balance. I can put that on with, you know, a relatively big lens. It's got batteries on it. 
Basically, everything I've thrown at this camera, including the Kinfinity, it's been able to balance and I'm not like using it and then all of a sudden it's, it's cutting out because the balance has gone off. I'm using it and it's giving me the results I want. And this is the first gimbal that I've owned that hasn't hindered me as an operator. It's actually just a huge benefit. And I take that thing out on shoot with me all the time. It's just there. I've got a couple of extras for it. I've got the LiDAR sensor, which again, gives me really great results. I was shocked by how plug and play it was. And it's not exactly plug and play, but there's not a lot you have to do to get it up and running. And I've just had great results out of it. I use the Lumix, which is obviously a lot smaller. That thing takes like two minutes to balance. When you buy kit, you want something that's not gonna prevent you from doing your job or that you have to work around. It's really nice to just have kit that works. And I think I'm seeing that a lot more with kit these days is that just I'm getting stuff. I've got the wireless transmitters and um, the Hollyland um, 400. I'll put the name on the screen. I've been using those on shoot a lot recently. Fantastic. Like, to transmitter to transmitter, I'm not getting any dropout. And even in the past when we've had, you know, more expensive options, they're always a bit finicky. But I've been getting really great results and I love that kit these days is just better. It's just becoming more of a pleasure to use. It's making shoots that I do feel way higher budget than they are, you know, when we can have a director's monitor, wireless setup. It's just nice. It's nice to be doing this. I talk to my friend Anderson, you films by AW. We talk about this all the time. 10, 15 years ago, when we were at university and we were making films, we could have only dreamed of some of the kit that we have now. And we talk about remaking those films to Dan and how much better they could be. Not just because our skills have improved, but also because the kits got a lot better. I remember 2009, running around London, trying to make it look empty with a fig rig, named after Mike Fig, and that was basically a steering wheel with a camera in the middle and a 5D. No options to pull focus wirelessly, no wireless transmitter. The 5D didn't even have a HDMI output. There was no way to monitor. And now we've got these cameras that can, the Komodo can send a feed without a transmitter. I mean, it's not particularly good and you've got to have the camera in 5G to do that, but like just as an option, just to check my frame in every now and then. I love it. I love how great tech has got and I'm super excited to see how much better it gets. I look at cameras now, I know we put up a lot of tests about cameras and stuff, but all those cameras are great. Some cameras do some stuff better than others, but like there's not as much in it these days in terms of like what you're getting of for another camera, you're gonna get a fantastic looking image out of the majority of cameras, which is great. I love it. So that pretty much wraps it up, guys. That's the end of the video. Let me know what tech you use, like those bits of tech that you just, those camera tech that you take on shoot every time, you can't live without. I would love to know. Give me some ideas of what to buy next. Not that I'm gonna be buying anything next because I spent way too much money on kit. But it's Christmas, so maybe I'll spend a bit more. So Merry Christmas, guys. There won't be a video next week because it's Christmas and I'm having a day off. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Those subscribers are going up, by the way. I'm loving it. I set a goal for the end of this year to get to a thousand subscribers and we're almost at two and a half thousand. So that's crazy to me that it's like we smashed it. So thank you so much. I really appreciate everyone that, you know, comments and watches the videos. It means a lot to me because <laughs> I, I put in a lot of effort and it's nice to know, you know, even even if it's not crazy numbers that people are watching. Merry Christmas, guys. See you soon. Catch you next time.